latest episode of The Good Dram Show with me, Chris Cadrum. Today, <laughs> coming from a somewhat uh, scorchingly hot Nottingham, um, <laughs> yeah, it's 30, 31 out there, I believe, today, um, which is sort of 92 degrees Fahrenheit, I think. Um, now, I guess for some of you that are watching this from uh, uh, sort of the west coast of America or Australasia, you're probably going, <laughs> nothing. That's absolutely nothing, but uh, um, for us, where our default weather tends to be sort of um, cold and wet, um, 31 is uh, is pretty damn hot, thank you very much. Um, so, yes, if I start melting, then you know the reason why. Sitting here in a darkened room with, uh, with the lights on, whew, things I do for you guys. Anyway, um... As per usual, a big thank you to everybody who watched last week's episode of the show. Uh, liked, commented, really appreciate your uh, your continued support. Also, as per usual, any comments I do make are wholly my own and have no bearing or relevance to the company I work for. Right, okay, so this week, um, more new stuff, um, which is really cool. Uh, and um, obviously, the, the continuing uh, sort of... I'd say getting back to a relative normality of the whiskey industry again sort of the samples are flowing out and uh, um, so I'm looking at uh, uh, a selection of, uh, of new releases from both um, A.D. Rattray who you know pretty well and um, Carn Moore now um, as you know the company that owns uh, Carn Moore or produces or releases Carn Moore has recently gone through a change a uh, change of name no longer Morrison Mackay they are now um, Morrison Distillers which appears to have led to yet another not yet yeah, sort of rebranding brand refresh if you like of the uh, of the strictly limited range I mean you know for years they pretty much were the same labels year in year out and uh, uh, I think it's probably the last two two or three years we've seen sort of I would guess at least sort of two maybe if not three uh, different uh, refreshing of the uh, of the labeling but which is always quite cool, don't mind, no problem at all, uh, as you well know, the, the, the labelling and what have you can be anything you like, as long as the juice is good, and uh, hopefully uh, the juice in the bottle of today's samples will be will be pretty good, so um, not a huge amount to say other than uh, let's have a look at today's samples. Right, okay, so it, when you've got sort of malts and grains, um, it's always a bit tricky to kind of figure out where to kind of start but uh, um, I think in this instance I'm going to start with the grain which is incidentally the oldest uh, bottling uh, I've got here so this is the uh, AD Rattray Vintage Cask Collection in the Gordon uh, it's 33 years old uh, bottled 48.9% um, distilled in 1988 bottled obviously this year uh, single bourbon cask 8160 so oh, nice one to start off with I think then we're going to sort of move into the strictly limited bottlings this is uh, an eight year old Glen Ord uh, bottled at 47.5 percent it's a single well it's, I'm assuming it's a single bourbon barrel probably there never used to be there used to be sort of at least two, two casks um, so it could be um, it was distilled in 2012 and obviously bottled uh, earlier this year uh, next one we're going to be looking at is a 12 year old Ben Rins uh, this has uh, been matured in first fill bourbon hogsheads um, distilled in 2008 and bottled this year at uh, 47.5 which is their sort of um, default bottling ABV now for uh, the strictly limited range then we're going to have a look at the second of the two AD Rattray uh, samples this is an 18 year old McDuff um, jolly good one of my favorite distilleries um, yeah okay that was sarcasm um, Right, so it's uh, 18 years old, it was a single cask, a first fill American Oak Oloroso Sherry Butt. Okay, fine, cool. Um, so uh, number 900262, distilled in 2002, bottled uh, earlier this year. Then we're going to move on to a 12 year old Glen Lossie. You're probably thinking, why Glen Lossie before the McDuff? And anyway, because this has been wholly aged in uh, ex red wine barriques, um, as you can see from the colour. Uh, so uh, it's uh, 12 years old, distilled in 2009, 
modeled this year at 47.5 and finally we're going to finish with a bit of peat because it's always a bit of fun to finish with a bit of peat even in this heat um, so this is the uh, Strictly Limited uh, Glen Turret Rudamor although in, on the label it just states Rudamore, but we obviously know that it comes from the Glen Turret uh, and uh, it's an 8 year old distilled in 2012 uh, refill sherry hogsheads um, and uh, bottled obviously this year so um, could be interesting uh, as I've often said I think probably one of the best things you can do with Glen Turret at this current moment in time is to shove it in the sherry cars compete the hell out of it yeah so we'll see what that's all about anyway um, I think this is going to be a, a fun tasting as per usual so let's kick off with a bit of old grunge <laughs> Right, okay, so 33 year old Invergordon. Let's uh, see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? That's a lovely nose. Um, lovely, dusty American oak, lovely, mature, sawdusty American oak. And it's got that classic, crisp, um, citric Invergordon character. Um, a little bit of sultana, dried banana, possibly, um, coconut spice a little bit of spice i mean it's got a lovely sort of balance between freshness and and vivacity and maturity uh, i mean that is that's a lovely nose i mean and although it's not cheap i forget what uh, what the retail price of this is but if you compare a 33 year old grain to a 33 year old single malt they are so much good value for money and um like I keep saying, I'm a big fan of, of, of grain whiskies, certainly when they're good, like this one, uh, because they just offer you something completely different to a malt, which is cool. Um, hmm, let's see what that's like. Lithe, lemony, fresh, citric, and then in comes a little bit of dusty American oak, a um, bit of toastiness as well, a bit of toasty oak, um, then the dried fruit, again it's that sort of lighter style of dried fruit, sort of more kind of sultana, that kind of thing. Um, mm, got that sort of lovely graininess, it kind of keeps the sort of like the, the oak in, in check. Um, very long juicy little bit of coconut banana continuing dried fruit again the crispness of the of the grain uh, just really keeps that wonderfully alive I mean that is a, a sensational old grain I mean it it feels relatively young uh, but it's certainly got enough complexity and like I said I think the balance between vivacity and uh, and maturity certainly of the oak characteristics is just absolutely spot on so hmm Lovely whiskey to start with. Right, okay, so let's move on to the Glen Ord. Now, it's interesting, you don't see a huge amount of Glen Ord about, and um, it's one of those whiskies that kind of um, sort of flatters to deceive a little bit. I often tend to find that Ord can come across overly oily, too oily for its own good uh, sometimes. So let's see what, uh, what the nose gives us on this then, shall we? Well, not too oily. There is a little bit of oiliness, as you would expect. Um, but it's really fragrant, really floral, honeysuckle, white fruit, vanilla. Touch of gooseberry, a little bit of lime creeping in as well. Barley. It, there's a slight confected edge to it. Not almost kind of bubblegummy. It's sort of kind of New World saving you on kind of richness. Um, but again, I think it's really nicely balanced. There's, a, there's an, a, enough uh, crisp, uh, fresher notes um, to kind of like just just all balance it up really nicely. Of course, you know this is obviously not going to be a, a whiskey that everybody's going to love, but I really like this. And considering how variable Glen Ord, or, or should we say how overtly oily Glen Ord can be, I really like this. And it's not an expensive bottling. I mean. You know, there's been a lot of chatter about how expensive whiskey is these days. And yes, it is expensive. Certainly, if you cast your mind back to um, the Hunter Lang episode. Um, but, 
you know, I think I've always thought the strictly limited range, although they have a tendency to be on the youngish side, but I think the value for money is, is normally pretty good. So, like I said, this is about 40s. Um, and I'm quite happy with that. I think it's lovely. Let's see what the pass like. Again, slightly oily, but not too oily. Fresh, citric. I think that extra ABV is certainly elevating the citric notes and certainly giving it that lovely kind of freshness and that balance. A um, little bit of granulated sugar, a little bit of vanilla. Again, slightly floral, honeysuckle, um, touch of spice. Mmm, I mean, that is damn good for an ord. I mean, you know, I just tasted that and when I first tasted it and thought, because I always kind of, you know, when you taste whiskies from distilleries that either you're not really a big fan of or you have a, a sort of a mental preconception, um, it's always nice when they suddenly kind of like just blow your mind and you just go, oh, oh my God, you know, is this really Glen Ward? You know, but no, that is actually a lovely whiskey. It's not expensive. It's a good everyday whiskey. All right, it's not, gonna, it's not that mega complex, but... It delivers what it delivers, I think, in a really nice way. So, yeah, thumbs up to that one. Right, OK, so let's move on to the Ben Rins. So, again, another one of those sort of distilleries that can be a little bit hit and miss, it has to be said. Um, but let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Obvious bourbon oak. Uh, it is quite bourbony. It's got that lovely sweet corn note, fresh sweet corn, none of that sort of like, you know, slightly burnt, toffeed, edged corn. Um, a bit of tannin, there's a bit of edgy citrus, sort of green fruit, gooseberry possibly, um, a bit of vanilla, a little bit of butter. I mean, okay, it is quite oaky. It's certainly a whiskey that, you know, only people... I say only people, but people that tend to like a lot of vanilla, a lot of soft vanilla, a lot of American oak will love. But again, I don't think it's too unbalanced. Yes, all right, it is in the oak sort of end of the spectrum, but it's certainly enough enough citrus and enough green fruit just to kind of cut through all that oak. Um, and yeah, I think for for a Ben Rins, yeah, more than more than happy with this. Let's see what parts on. Barley, toasted oak, tight tannins. Mm, it's almost a touch of berry fruit, possibly. Again, a little bit of citrus, a little bit of uh, lemon. Mm, gets really quite spicy. I mean, again, the oak is very, very noticeable. It is quite woody, but that gives it a lovely spicy finish. I'm not getting any real oak bitterness, which is quite a surprise. Um, and it just carries on in that lovely sort of spicy... Uh, slightly green fruit kind of manner right through to the finish. Now this is in the 50 odd quid mark and like I said I think it's certainly a whiskey that um, uh, is suitable for people that like quite oaked whiskey um, but I don't think it's unbalanced like I said so you know I think uh, all top and yet another good whiskey. Right, okay, so let's move on to the 18-year-old Macduff. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Right, okay, so um, it's quite sherried. It's quite dense. It's malty. It's very clean. There's no sulfur blemishes. And the spirit itself is quite clean. I mean, I remember, you know, going back sort of 12, 15 or so years ago and, you know, Macduff was a byword for <laughs> rough. Um, yes, it could have e easily be called McRuff Distillery or uh, something of that ilk. Um, so, but it certainly seems that um, this is uh, certainly a cleaner, cleaner spirit. Um, cinnamon, pepper, Plenty of dried fruit, lots of Oloroso, dark chocolate. I don't get a great deal of spirit character, but then, like I said, I'm 
maybe that's for the best. Um, certainly it's not got that, what I, I would have expected, that sort of slightly industrial spirit character. It certainly doesn't have any of that. Um, but then I'm guessing that um, that's because the sherry is in control. Let's uh, see what the palate gives. Well, that's a bit of a sherry monster. Um, quite tannic, um, although the tannins are relatively soft, they're not bitter. Um, raisinated fruit, prune, dark fruit, walnut, touch of treacle, dark toffee. It's it's pretty much all Oloroso. Um, I mean, it's got a good length. The, 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 the Oloroso fruits kind of keep going. Um, a touch of burnt toast maybe on the finish. Uh, plenty of spice. No distillery character whatsoever, but then again, like we said, this is my tough, so maybe that's a blessing. Um, ooh, um, I'll keep sticking that knife in. Um, it's not really my cup of tea, as you well know. It's it's pretty much all about the Oloroso and, and not a great deal of anything else. Uh, I'll put a little drop of water with it and uh, see if that does anything. Um, I must admit, this is hits the shelves at about what 148 quid and for me I I would want more complexity uh, I don't want really want sort of all sherry okay it's kind of pushed the sherry back a little um, it's but that's <laughs> a little um, it's still it's a little bit lighter possibly not quite so dark not quite so uh, sort of resonated and treacly but still sherry nevertheless Pass on. Again, it's lightened the sherry a, a tad, but it's still pretty sherried. Um, it's not a great deal of anything else. There's no bitterness, it's quite soft. There's a, a little bit of dark chocolate creeping in now, but like I said, you know, 148 quid, it's I wouldn't say it's a one-dimensional sherry monster. There is a little bit going on there, but I still feel 148 quid is just asking an awful lot for something like that. Unless, of course, you love these sort of sherry monsters, then maybe that's your bag. But for me, mm. right? Okay. So let's move on to the 12-year-old Glen Lossie. Now. Glen Lossie. I love Glen Lossie. I love the, the, the spirit that comes off those stills in Glen Lossie. It's light. It's elegant. It's delicate. Um, and then you stick it in, uh, in uh, ex red, red wine casks. I mean, I'm not expecting anything to have uh, any spirit out to, to survive that, to be honest with it. And there ain't. It's, 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 it's all wine. It's um, earthy, black, red fruit, gritty tannin. I mean, there's a semblance, a feeling of spirit, but I couldn't sort of say, well, there's certainly no barley character, there's certainly no white fruits or anything like that. You know, it's um, it's kind of like a, just a sort of slightly alcoholic, whiny kind of character. Um, it's got that sort of chocolatey herbalness. Um, again, I guess that, you know, there's a lot of people that will that will love this kind of uh, whiskey, but again, for me, it's it's kind of, too oak dominated um, and uh, like I said you know it's like why with a Glen Lossie I mean pick something with maybe a little bit more guts to it a Blair Athol for example or or, or, or um, another one of those sort of more weightier uh, kind of whiskies Mortlach for example you know those kind of spirits seem to have the, the, the cojones to kind of stand up to being battered by sherry and wine and things like that lovely sort of delicate elegant kind of Glen Lossie is kind of going to get trampled really and um, yeah this has been well and truly trampled Let's see what that's like gritty tannic red Red black fruit, 
quite syrupy, so it's got a, a counterbalancing sweetness. Um, touch of dark chocolate. But again, no spirit character. It's got a reasonable length. Again, the kind of the wininess just kind of continues. Um, and adds a little bit of spice. Um, and it's so it's... It, like I said, the, 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 it's quite tannic, but again, quite syrupy. So they kind of, again, those two sort of uh, opposing characteristics kind of balance each other up a bit. And again, if you like that type of thing, then then fine. It's a good whiskey. Um, don't know. How, I can't remember how much um, how much this would hit the shelves for. But uh, being a twelve-year-old, I'm assuming sort of somewhere in the region of the same sort of price as the uh, the Ben Rins and. Um, I think I'd rather have the Ben Rins, to, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, there's no issue with the quality of what's in the bottle. It's just it, the fact that it's, to me, it is unbalanced. It's all about the red wine cask, and I'm not getting any any character from the uh, the spirit whatsoever. So, um, call me picky. <laughs> Right, okay, it's time to finish with a bit of peat. So, uh, Glen Turret, Rudamore, eight years old. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Oh, dear God. Um, peaty, uh, um, slightly sulfurous, uh, young, rose petal mar, a little bit of heather, maybe some honey as well. Touch of dried fruit, rubber, touch of tar. I mean, it's intense. I mean, it's 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 actually quite fun, you know. I mean, you know, I was having a conversation with uh, with a friend of mine the other the other week, um, and he was saying, you know, I get bored of of perfect whiskies. You know, I like whiskies that have flaws because you can talk about them, and um, this has some flaws. Um, but you know what? It's quite fun if you like peated whiskies, which I do. Um, I mean, there's no distillery character, thankfully. Um, I mean, as we well know, Glen Turret are really... Well, they have been, as far as I'm aware, or in my estimation, they have been kind of pushing those stills a bit too hard because Glen Turret is nowhere near as polished and as lovely as it used to be. Um, and this is kind of raw, in-your-face, take no prisoners sulfury, peaty, grab you by the what's it. I mean, hell, yeah, why not? Um, let's see what the palace like. Right, the palate's a little bit more polite, it has to be said. It's still quite meaty. Um, it's peaty. It's not so much of the sulphur. In actual fact, I don't really get any sulphur notes coming through now. Um, it's some white fruit, some apricot, um, a little bit of burnt wood, a little bit of uh, vanilla, a little bit of dried fruit as well. Um, it's still a bit of a rawness there, um, but it's kind of quite well contained. Um, I mean, it's it. Yeah, it, it's like yeah, it's got its flaws. It's, but the thing is, as we well know, with the sort of like you know peated malts, you know when they are bottled quite young, you you get that exuberance, you get that intense, youthful peaty character, and you kind of live a little bit with the sort of the fact that the spirit is a little bit unevolved. Um, now I can't remember the price of that, but I think again. Uh, although it's an eight-year-old, for some reason, obviously Glen Turret charges a lot more for their casks. Uh, it, I think it's around about the same sort of price as the Ben Rins. Um, and you know what? Yeah, I kind of quite like that in a kind of you know sadistic sort of way. I suppose you know. Uh, I suppose you know if you're going to have a peated malt, you may as well go the whole hog. You know, there's no point in sort of half-assing around with a bit a bit of smoke and a sort of like you know if you're going to go go peat. Go large, as they say, and um, well, yeah, that certainly delivers. So, hmm. right, okay, so that's some of today's episode of the show. Firstly, a big thank you to AD Rattray and to Morrison Distillers for the samples for today's episode of the show. Um, 
appreciate the, uh, the the continued support. That's uh, that's really nice. Hopefully, uh, they won't be too offended by some of the things I've said. But uh, anyway, um, so the the Inver Gordon that we kicked off with, I I thought it was very very good. You don't see so much grain around now. It's quite unusual. I mean, there was a sort of like a few years ago there was there, there, there seemed to be a load of it. Uh, being bottled by the independents, you know, it was washing around all over the place, and uh, um, that seems to have dried up a little bit. But so it's nice to see sort of like you know uh, a, a grain being released with with some age. I mean, I've, you know, there have been some a lot younger grain bottlings that I've uh, I've tasted uh, over the last sort of year or so, and. Uh, as you well know, grain whiskey does require some age in the cask. I mean, bottling it anywhere younger than sort of 21, and you're not really getting a huge amount of character. But that, that I thought was just absolutely spot on. Um, and um, the Ord, like I said, I was really impressed by that. Um, I, I kind of, I suppose that's because I wasn't expecting really great things, and it just completely blew me away. It's just, just a lovely whiskey. Uh, at the end of the day, and um, uh, I wouldn't say it kind of breaks the mould, but like I said, you know, ore tends to have this kind of overtly oily character, which can sometimes be a bit detrimental. But that, all right, yeah, a little bit confected in places, but I'm, I, I loved that. I thought that was absolutely gorgeous. Um, the, uh, the the Ben Rins, um, possibly a little over oaked, a little bit too much American oak, but you know, there was some balance there, and that's that's all you can ask for at the end of the day or that's what I ask for at the end of the day is balance you know um, all right that is shifted slightly more towards the the oak end of the spectrum like I said but I, I think there was enough um, spirit character there to sort of like say we're, we're, we're kind of actually quite uh, quite pleasant so so yeah I thought that was uh, that was a really good one um, the Macduff um, yeah okay it being aged in Oloroso or, uh, you know, uh, an, uh, an American oak Oloroso, but, um, yeah, it was kind of all sherry, really. It just didn't quite have the have the complexity and it didn't have the balance and it certainly didn't have, for me, um, enough interest to sort of warrant the, the price tag. Now, there are others may well disagree and uh, there are a lot of people that love the, love the sherry stuff, so fine, you know, that's, that's cool by me. Um... And the same with the Glen Lossy, although obviously you know we're not talking three figures for that for the Glen Lossy, but it, it's again another one of those whiskies where it's just all about the cask and there's there's no no light and shade and and you kind of think well you just look at it on paper and you go Glen Lossy aged in red wine barriques you're just going to go well there ain't going to be any distillery character there whatsoever yes all right you're kind of prejudging it and you hope that maybe when you taste it that 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 prejudgment will be wrong but sort of shall we say uh, nine times out of ten it isn't and in this case again like I said just sort of two one-dimensional really and uh, the Glen Turret Rudamore I mean I thought that was a bag of fun you know or, or a bag of whatever um, it, it was mad it was kind of uh, it was raw it was in your face and like I said you know if you're gonna do Pete you may as well do Pete big time uh, at the end of the day um, and just just go <laughs> go all in on that, and it was it was a bundle of fun. It has to be said. Um, uh, of course, obviously that is implying that you you guys would uh, like the peated malts. If you hate the peated malts, then well, no, you ain't gonna like it. Full stop. Um, but for me, I I thought it was uh, it was it was fun. Um, so yeah, I'd quite happily sort of uh, recommend that. And um, like I said, uh, in uh, was it last week's episode of the show? No, I think it was in the uh, Hunter Lang episode of the show. Uh, read between the lines is all I can say, shall we say. Anyway, so that's this week's episode of the show in the bag. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, next week will be more of the same, really, just you know my opinions and uh, all that kind of stuff. So uh, until next week, good dramming and good afternoon. <laughs>